Hi, I'm Kaizu. Um, the day today is January 7th, 1998. Uh, time right now is 12.09 p.m. and Wednesday. And um, I'm just here, to, this is just a very short documentary, video documentary of a little project I've been working on, which has been lasted now for about half a year. Um, basically, oops. Sorry. Basically, um, I'm, what my project is, is a little trans, transmission for mechanical engines. And um, as you know, a transmission works simply by controlling the speed of the mechanical engine. So you can control the speed of the vehicle or lawnmower or whatever device. Now, the way my transmission works is it uses a diff mechanical differential, basically, the principles of it, at least. And the, a mechanic for me, uh, here's the mechanical differential right here, um, an example. Um, and what's unique about a differential is it has three rotating parts. Can you see that? Let's see. And I've just conveniently labeled the parts here for this differential. You can see here's part number one, part number two, and part number three. And each part can rotate, but the rotation depends strictly on the rotational properties of the other two parts. For example, say I was to hold part number two stationary so it would not rotate. Okay? I hold it stationary and I simply rotate part number one and part number three will rotate here you see in exactly the opposite direction at one to one ratio velocity to part number one this is with part number two being stationary now the way my transmission works is kind of like assume like this let's put it back into original position assume you we have an input engine applying some constant input speed to part number one, which will rotate it. Now, let's have part number three, and then we have the output speed, which to, to drive the car or drive your lawnmower or whatever, um, being part number two. So when part number two rotates, it's actually driving whatever task you're trying to do. Now, part number three is a special for this differential. It's what I call a controlling unit controls the speed of part number two. The way it works, okay, say you, 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 you see a stoplight driving the car, so you stop the car and the car is idling. Well, if the car is idling with this transmission in this case, um, which means this part is not rotating, the engine is still applying some constant speed. And basically the controlling unit is in a free spin, spinning in exactly the opposite direction. Well, and um, a one-to-one -one ratio to part number one and when this happens part number two does not rotate at all sorry keep getting outside the camera's range now if you want part number two let's say the light turns green so you now need to accelerate your car in this case with this transmission you to get part number two which will mo actually move the wheels to rotate you simply change the speed of the controlling unit now let's say if I was to, okay, let me do it this way, it makes it easier to see here, part number one and number two are both rotating, let's see, oops, both rotating in exactly the opposite direction at the same speed. If I was to slow down slightly the rotation of part number three, it's the controlling unit, say I have some device to apply some kind of resistance to this part number three, then I will have, begin having some rotation by part number two. See, okay, right now they're both same, and then I'll slowly s slow down rotation of part number three. And as you can see, part number two begins to rotate slightly. Now, if I were to completely stop, apply some maximum some maximum resistance, say that completely stops rotation of part number three, then I will have part number two. I stop it, but I'm still rotating part number one. You see, part number two begins rotating faster, and this is the maximum speed part number two can now rotate. So this would be like the top cru speed I'm cruising down the car on a highway right now. And basically this is how my transmission works. It simply controls the speed by controlling the amount of resistance applied to part number three, or the controlling unit. And the thing here is you don't need to control the speed of the engine at all to control the speed of your vehicle or whatever the transmission is intended for. Now, now let's go to the actually applied device that I use. Here we go.
here is a radio control car. The way this car um, works, it was um, originally when I bought this car, it didn't have any transmission system at all. The only thing, the only way you could control the speed of this car was by controlling the, um, the speed of the engine, which is the air fuel mixture, and also controlling the, the resistance of, of the clutch chute. All, all the engine had was a chute clutch. Chute clutch. Control the speed by controlling this. Uh, <laughs> by controlling the clutch, the friction applied to the clutch, or the speed to the engine. Now that's a very rudimentary speed control system. I mean, controlling speed in engine that is not very good idea for controlling speed of a vehicle in general. And when you try to control the speed with the clutch, the shoe clutch, it's very bad for the clutch because the friction and everything quickly wears away parts and you quickly need to replace them. Now, so I basically, I took out the engine and the clutch system and just put on my transmission system. Here, I um, also replaced the engine. Um, instead of using the old boring radio control engine, I slapped on a weed eater gasoline powered engine from uh, some long equipment. And um, basically this engine applies input shaft as this input shaft, which goes to the gear reduction unit to reduce the speed so that this car doesn't get overwhelmed by this engine power. And um, this reduction unit applies an input speed to this unit here, which is my transmission system. It's basically a differential which works exactly the same principle I previously explained. Here, I don't know if you can see the three parts. Here's, part, here's one rotating part, which is where the input speed is applying the rotation. Here's the controlling unit here, um, which controls the speed, and here's the output part, the differential which gives them, um, which will actually drive this, this front set of wheels. So it's a front wheel drive radio control car. Now how it works is um, my resistor unit is not some friction-based brake system or whatever, which would quickly wear down the system and you have to replace the friction units quite often. Instead, it doesn't use friction at all, it's a pump system. And what this is here is a, this shiny metal thing, is a two-way air pump. Now the way the controlling unit works is, when the controlling unit is rotating, which means it's in, it's in free motion and the car is idle, it'll rotate this pump. Can you see the pump moving up and down? start moving forward, I simply stop the rotation of this car. Pump. I lock this pump up so that it cannot move up or down, which locks the control unit from moving, which forces the output gear, output unit to rotate because it's having some input from this engine. And the way it does it is the pump is attached to a system of air tubings here. These air tubings connect to a valve. These air tubings, they connect to the valve unit. Basically, to control the resistance of the pump, I control the valve. If I completely close the valve, then I stop the flow of air through these tubes, and the pump becomes locked. Since it's not free air, it can't, it can't move up or down, and the car is moving at maximum speed because I'm trying. I'm, I've locked the controlling unit. Now, if I open the valve completely, then air flows freely through the system, and the pump moves up and down freely, and the car idles. If you want to see how the valve works, I'm going to turn this car around. There you go. This here is the valve. See, the pump connects.
connects the pair into this valve, which goes back out into the other side of the pump. And if you want to see an action, wow, exciting, huh? As you can see, I'm, right now I'm opening the valve. The valve is completely open, and in this case, the transmission is out. You know, I want to slowly accelerate, I slowly close the valve until finally the valve is completely closed, which completely stops the airflow, which locks the pump, which forces the output to rotate at maximum speed. And that's how my transmission works. Now we can take this car out for a little test drive to see it in action. <laughs>